Chicago is famous for their pizza, but one place in particular sets themselves apart from every other pizza place in the city. They have a pizza pot pie. So today, I will be making my own rendition of Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinders pizza pot pie that you don't have to wait two hours in line for and has a literal fraction of the calories. My name is Nick, I have my master's in exercise physiology and I make anabolic recipes and I also do full days of eating and the like. So if you're into recipes and tips for getting lean, then like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you are ready to experience pizza like you never have before, then let's get into it. First, we need to make our dough. If you do make a dough, I would highly suggest making three, four, or five of these so you can put the extra ones in the fridge and pull them out whenever you want to make one on any night of the week as they last a week in the fridge and they actually get better over time. Work smarter, not harder. For example purposes, I will be making two doughs. So if you want one dough, use half of this recipe. If you want four doughs, use double this recipe. We will start with our bread flour, 142 grams. Oh, and obviously, make sure you got a scale. A scale for this recipe is absolutely crucial. Super cheap, 20 bucks. Definitely would pick one up. One gram of garlic powder, two grams of salt, two grams of olive oil. Olive oil makes the final product more crispy, more tender, and more flavorful. So the extra nine calories is worth it. I promise you. Most people like to test the yeast. I know my yeast is already good, so I'm gonna add two grams right into the bowl. I already have my water weighed out. I'm gonna put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. I want it to get to about 110 to 120 degrees, and then we will add it to our bowl. I always like to make sure that my water's at temp and we are at 118 degrees, so we are perfect. And we add our water. For this part, we don't even need to get our hands dirty. I'm going to start mixing with my spoon, and once it's pretty well incorporated, I'm gonna switch over to the spatula, but just keep mixing everything in. It seems like the dry ingredients won't mix in, but you gotta keep pressing all the dry ingredients in. All we wanna do is get the dry ingredients incorporated. So once you don't see powder anymore, we are good to go. I'm going to put some saran wrap on the top and put it in the microwave. It has been 15 minutes on the dot and our dough has grown just a little bit. If you notice, there's some dough or flour that is stuck to the sides. We're not getting that back. We don't use every single gram. And so we're going to lightly dust some flour here and I'm not gonna count those calories in since there's some that's stuck to the side and it's only a couple grams anyway. And this is where we will get a little bit dirty. But yeah, I kind of just go in this circular motion and then go with the palm of my fist. There's not that much hydration in this, so it's not going to stick that much, which is a good thing. And if your one arm gets tired, you could always switch over to the other one. But at this point, I can do this while talking to you guys. This is very easy. So once you do this once or twice, I'm telling you, don't be afraid of dough, especially when you make five of these at the same time and you have them for the whole week. Really quickly, we're gonna do the window test. The window test is being able to see through the dough without it ripping. I don't know if you guys can see, but I can see right through this dough. It is ready and it's only been five minutes. We gotta let our dough rise one more time. All I do with whatever spray oil you want, one, two, that's it. And then we spread it out. We don't want it to stick too much to the bowl. Get our nice little ball here, pick it up. Plop it in. Now you don't have to do this, but I give it a nice little boop. And we cover, and I'm gonna put it in the microwave since that's a warm place for about an hour. And I'll see you back in a second to make our sauce. If you don't wanna make a homemade sauce, that's understandable. I got us a replacement in ragu garden combination. This was the closest one that I can find with the most similar calories. This is grab and go, plug and play, and you can use this right away. It is a little bit more watery and it doesn't taste as good. This is like going to Flavor Town when you go to mine. It's like going to Chicago. We're going to Flavor City. But if you're in a pinch and need something quick, you can do this. However, Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinders has their own homemade sauce that includes green peppers, onions, and ground beef. 
For calorie purposes, I am not including the ground beef, but if you would like to, go right ahead. But this comes together in literally 10 to 15 minutes. I would highly suggest you make it, and then you have enough for 10 pizzas afterward, or dipping sauce for mozzarella sticks, or whatever the case may be. Totally 100% worth it and way better than any store-bought sauce. We will start by turning on our stove on medium and we are going to put five grams of olive oil in here. What I like to do is put the olive oil there, get a tablespoon and then take five grams out. Perfect. I already chopped up 80 grams of bell pepper and 80 grams of onions. Make it thicker chunks if you like your sauce thicker or make smaller chunks if you like your chunks smaller or your sauce less chunky. And I'm going to use an immersion blender because I like mine even smoother, but that's up to you. We're gonna add our veggies in here. And I wanna cook the green pepper and onion till it's translucent. It usually takes about two to three minutes if your stovetop is already preheated. Our veggies are ready. I'm gonna crush the garlic right into the pan here. What I do, I got this from Sam the cooking guy, is I make like a circle in the middle of the pan here, and I'm going to crush the garlic right onto there. Now, if you don't have fresh garlic, you can use the pre-minced, but fresher is always better. And we're gonna use eight grams of this, and all the ingredients are listed in my pinned comment below. Now you gotta be kinda quick about this because we only want this to be in here until it starts smelling fragrant. We don't wanna burn the garlic, or else the pizza sauce is gonna have a little bit of a weird taste to it. I'm already smelling it, so I'm going to add my pizza sauce in here. All of it, the whole can. Give it a good mix really quick. And now we will add all of our other ingredients. First, 66 grams of tomato paste, a gram of oregano, a gram of crushed red pepper. Once everything is added, I mix everything in really thoroughly. You don't need the immersion blender for this recipe, but I wanna get mine a little bit finer, so I'm going to use it. If you don't have an immersion blender, just cut your pieces finer. It's up to you. In case you do have an immersion blender, I did that for about 30 seconds. It's already starting to bubble here, so I'm gonna turn it down to medium low and just let it simmer. It has been about 15 minutes, our sauce is done simmering, and now I'm gonna add our salt and our swerve. Now, this is personal taste preference. Add as much or as little as you like. I like to put in seven grams of salt and 10 grams of swerve, but if I were you, I would put in a little bit, taste it, put in a little bit, taste it. Okay, I'm gonna mix this in and set this to the side and let it cool down and I will see you guys back in about half an hour so we can make our pizza pot pie. Our dough has risen, our sauce is cooled off and it is time to split this up into two parts which quite literally I am going to split this in half. These usually weigh about 118, 119, 120 grams per dough. All you do, one spray, mix it around, and you plop it in, and then you put it into the fridge. And like I said, this lasts up to a week. We will use this one in a second here. I'm just gonna get it back into a ball, and I'm gonna let it sit. This is important. We're going to take a bowl that is about five and a half inches wide. It doesn't really matter so much how deep it is, but this is about an inch and a half deep, and we're going to make our pizza pot pie. If you have a wider bowl, that means there needs to be more dough to go across it, which means you'll need to make a bigger dough. So you have to get a bowl that's around five and a half, six inches. If you get a seven or eight inch bowl, you might have to make a bigger dough, which just means more calories. We're gonna take our spray, one, two, and we're gonna spread this around in here. What we are using is part skim, 80 calorie per serving mozzarella. You can go to the fridge section or whatever and get mozzarella slices, but they are too thick. What I would suggest doing is going to the deli and ask them to slice your mozzarella thin. Reason being, we want to cover all of this with the cheese. And with only using 65 grams like we're going to use, it's very hard for two and like one third pieces to cover everything. All we have to do is lay it across so we cover the whole bowl. As you can see, this is entirely covered. Now I'm gonna put this on the scale and we're going to weigh out 65 grams of fat-free mozzarella. Now that the cheese is done, we're going to add 85 grams of our homemade sauce here. All we have to do now is we'll take our dough and I push in the middle here and I just try to make it bigger and bigger. And it doesn't even have to be a perfect circle, but I try to just keep slowly making it bigger and bigger until it looks like we're almost ready to be able to cover the whole bowl here. 
This looks pretty good. So I'm gonna lay it right on top and just bring it around the edges and pat it down until everything's sticking here. As you can see, we have our pot pie ready to go. Nice and thick around the edges, thin on the top here. All we're gonna do is throw this in the oven at 400 degrees for 16 minutes. What I like to do is put this on a tray like this and put it right into the oven. Our pizza is about done, but our last extra special weapon here is going to be a little bit of light butter. Three grams to be exact. And we're gonna put this in the microwave for about six seconds. And we will take our pizza pot pie out. Oh, and she's looking so lovely. It does look very nice. However, it could use a little bit of extra flavor, just like with that gram of olive oil. This three grams of butter is going to set it apart from the rest. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this off of here. With this tray, we're gonna put aluminum foil on here to cover it up. And we're gonna put our oven in broiler mode. And really quickly here, we're gonna put this back on here and we're going to put the butter not only on the top, but on the sides here. So we have a nice buttery crust. And as you can see with under, because there's still extra in here, with under three grams of butter, we have this completely covered. There's no really method or madness. We're gonna flip this over. And we're gonna take the same spoon we used for the butter, and we're gonna push the dough off of it. And we're gonna get our spoon underneath the bowl here and lift it out. At this point, this is usually at your table and they pull the ball out from there, but I don't like that. So the other thing that I'm gonna do that's a little bit different, well, first of all, I'm gonna brush some butter on the very tips of this crust here that I couldn't get when it was the other way. And I like my cheese nice and brown. This is atypical compared to the actual Chicago pizza and oven grinder, so feel free to eat it like this, but I think you get that full flavor from the cheese when you put it under the broiler and brown the cheese about a minute and a half, two minutes, but keep your eye on it. Now look at this. Nice brownness even on the crust, nice brownness in the cheese, and this pizza pot pie is ready to max. Definitely watch yourself. I would not eat this yet. It's going to be super, super hot, especially since it was just underneath the broiler. But I'm gonna cut this up with scissors just so I don't mess up the aesthetics of this. But feel free to cut it up with a regular slicer. This is the one time I will say it's okay to use a fork and a knife for a pizza. The one time. I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. Let's see how we're looking as we pull it out here. And it's so damn hot that the cheese is sliding right off. If you let it cool for a little bit more though, the cheese will stay on there. Real quick, actually, let's go over the macros. We have 615 calories, 47 protein, 72 carb, and 17 fat. For a real from scratch dough, real cheese, and a homemade sauce. For a pizza, you cannot Beat it, guaranteed. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, let's see this one. See this? You see this? This is worth your 45 minutes. It'll take about 45 minutes to prepare everything and then it'll take you zero minutes for the rest of the week because you just throw it in a bowl and throw it in the oven. Right away, you could taste the butteriness from the crust and also that flavor hit of the browned cheese. And then you get like the little bit of onion, a little bit of green pepper, and you could really taste how fresh the sauce is. It is so damn good and I highly suggest you make it. About a week ago, I made a calzone just for fun and it got me thinking, should I make a calzone? So you guys let me know down in the comment section if I should make a calzone. Use code E4CM for 10% off your Gorilla Mind purchases, whether that be pre-workout, whether that be Gorilla Dream, which gives me some of the best sleep I've had, their fat burners, Terkesterone that they just restocked, et cetera, et cetera. 
and then 15% off using the same code E4CM, your PE science purchases. Any of these purchases goes towards a good product that you will not only love, but also help support the channel and helps me make this 20 times or the protein ice cream that's about to come out, the cookie blizzard that I made 30 times. So it would be greatly appreciated and I appreciate all the love that you guys have shown me on the Power 13 cookbook as well and on my code for PE science. It has been unbelievable. Love you guys. See you guys very soon, very soon. And until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do see.